We're gonna set up here out at the Hooter, guys, just off my shoulder. What are you gonna throw out to start? So we've got two, uh, these are uh, Rapala X-Rap Magnum, so they're a little bit deeper divers. Uh, we're gonna start with one green mackerel color, one red white, and uh, those seem to be the hottest colors, and if we see one producing better than the other, we'll, uh, we'll switch them both over, so. All right, I'm setting this out. Chris, how, how far back do you usually set them? Um, I like to go back about uh, 50, 60 feet. We're gonna pick up the speed just a tad. Tell me when you're out. I got one out. I'm rigging up the other right now. So easy a caveman can do it. Yeah, we ran a story in our August issue, and one of the guys I interviewed for it uh, on Benito trolling said, he'll go four, four knots, he'll start there. If the bluefish are bad, he'll push it up to five. I guess so I've always but. fished the hooter, it'd be over five, and the reason why is the bluefish will whack it between three and a half and four. Yeah, I mean, even when you're going fast, you, you can't quite outrun the bluefish all the time, but it does cut down on them a little bit. One rod out, bringing up rod number two. So one thing about Benito, Chris, is they are notorious for following, when you have a hooked one, they'll tend to bring in a couple followers. So if we don't double up, you know, grab one of these, the rods we have rigged with, uh, with a small jig. Cast back off the back of them. Yeah, just throw it, uh, throw it all out the back there, see if we can, uh, we can catch one that way as well. You got bait here, I can tell you that. Man, the screen's loaded. Tons of bait up top, some bigger fish down below. Now they could be sea bass, they could be bluefish, or they could be bonito. There we go, there we go, there we go. That's a, there fish. We go. a fish. In gear or out of gear? Leave it in gear for a little bit if that's if you can fight them like that. I can. Let's just see if we could get another one. Is he uh Brandon, we just came over with some really nice marks there. Uh, this guy is trying to run against us. I don't know how, Jimmy, I haven't set the drag. It's pretty tight. I've got him relatively tight. Want me to keep us in gear though, Chris? Keep or? it in gear. Okay. I'm just kind of like clamping down the line and bringing him to me and then, it is a little bonito, All Jimmy. Right. The right kind. Right, Jimmy, I'm gonna let you grab the leader. Yeah, you walk back this way and I'll grab him. Hopefully the uh, Yamahas don't fillet him first. <laughs> He's buttoned up. That's a typical Benito fight. Chris, you can keep reeling that. That'll go right. There we go. And all right. <laughs> we are on the board, buddy. Perfect. There we go. So that's the green one. Both hits, even though the one was a blue fish, came on that green today. So by mixing the salt water into your ice, it's actually gonna get colder. And, and keep things colder. And also, it keeps the meat a little bit better. Sometimes if you put the you know, saltwater fish on fresh water and that starts to melt, it's gonna affect the quality of the meat. So, that guy's put him in there. And he's still kicking. Woo. Back in 50 feet of water. I'm doing like what I like call little Esther. Looks like it's starting to set up back there a little bit. See the edge right along the edge here? Yeah, yeah, I think we just got out here at slack tide. I think that's it. And as, this, as the current picks up, the fishing should improve. And so I'm gonna start heading back up where I see this rip setting up and where we picked up that fish. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. Fish on, Jimbo, fish on. I'm gonna take it out of gear this time. He's We're just running. slightly in gear right now, Jimmy. Perfect. For a second he was running at me and that is just another one of their, one of their signature Tell -tale moves. Telltale signs, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they definitely, they don't fight as hard as Albies, but they do freak out when they see the boat. And it is, yep. I think I got him, Chris. You can, if you want to throw the boat back into gear and get us trolling, we'll be in momentarily. Not a very big one, so it's just going to grab the leader, flip him in just like that. Might be another eater. Oh, I think it is. Definitely on the small side, but it's still a lot of fun and great to eat, and they are just Really cool looking fish, man. I mean, just totally built for speed. You know, with that tuna shape, that real hard tail. What would you consider that, like a two-year-old? So last year, in 2018, there were a ton, from Maine down to New Jersey, there were a ton of eight to 10 inch bonito being caught. I mean, it was just unprecedented, the number of them that were around. And this year, we're seeing a lot of, you know, what's it, let's, let's say 16 to 20 inch bonito. And they are pretty fast growing, so it's, these are probably those two-year-old fish returning. There must have been a boom in the Benito population. And now we're, we're kind of reaping the benefits of it. Well, with, with the water heating up the way it has, we seem to get these fish a little earlier. 
And you know, it's funny, you see up and down, I, I think I was reading yesterday or two days ago, the big cobia that was caught down in New York. And so with the water temperatures continuing to pick up, you're gonna see more and more of these fish arriving earlier. And some of these other fish that we generally don't get, like the king mackerel we were getting last year. Jimmy, as soon as I came around to that shelf again, whack. So far we've had one on the red, white, and one on the green. So no, no clear color preference after our first two fish. Jimmy, what's the limit on the um, Benito? No limit, Chris. It's they, no size limit, no bag limit. It's kind of your discretion. I think what you can eat fresh. You know, maybe we'll bring some out and then give them to the guys at the office. Yeah. Maybe I'll kick one to a cameraman. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. And, uh, <laughs> 20 feet of water. I want to get back to that 40, 45 feet. That seems to be the line right now where they're hanging on. So those two fish we picked up running with the current. So now we're going to go ahead and run into the current and see if that makes any difference. So even though most of the Benito this year seem to be those two-year-old fish in the two to three, maybe four pound class, there have been some five to eight pounders caught as well. And those ones on that, this tackle will really put up a fight. I hope we can get one of them, but if we catch just, just these smaller two and three pounders, it's, uh, that's a lot of fun too. So. Chris, Chris, we're on. Fish on, boys. It's that same spot, Jimbo. Here, you Tight. grab that. Yep, yep, grab it. I'm actually going to make a couple casts. Oh, ho, ho. See if he, he's trailing anybody. Yeah, this is definitely another one. I'm going to go ahead and pull that back a little bit on the controls. Whoa, there's Whoa. the run. There's the run we were looking for, Jimmy. So this fish just made that telltale run, which is very, very typical of the Benito and especially typical of the albacore. And so I had marked the oh, fish. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's like the canal. About the same size as Jimmy's, he's really running out the boat right now. He's going to see the boat and he's going to make things a little bit. There he is. He yeah, just saw it right there. And he as just soon did. as they see the boat, every time they freak out. It's a little bit Which better. Makes Here, sense. Chris, you slide up that way. All right, I'm going to walk him in. This guy's probably closer to the first one. Yeah, he looks a little bit bigger than mine, at least. Jimmy, I'm going to walk him right over your shoulder. Yeah, just watch that hook. Pop him in. Nice. So Beautiful. That's, that's number two for red and white. Right there. Oh, oh, Chris, Chris, fish on, Chris, fish on, fish on. Jimmy, is that me? That's you, Jimbo. I'm gonna leave the other yeah, one leave for it a in, second. Yeah, leave it in, see if we can double up. Actually, I think we are on, Chris. I think we're double. Double up. Out of gear. All right. Yeah. This guy doesn't feel like a bonito unless it's one of those little cookie cutter one and a half pounders. This one's, this one's screaming right up, he's running up right up the uh, port side right now. This has to be a video going this fast. Oh. Yeah, even a small one, man. They have some, got some horsepower. Jimmy, one of the things we're not going to do is we're not going to rip the gill and then just hold them over the, over the boat. Beautiful fish. Little one Benito. Jimmy, yours looks a little better. No, he's just, just an athlete. Man, look at, Matt, look at him. He's going bananas. I've heard a lot of guys say they're faster than Albies. Guys, these are those two-year-old Benitos. Last year, as you said, they just showed up really, really small. We've been running out here anywhere between four and a half and five to five and a half. We covered quite a bit of ground since we uh, since we got out here, but Chris kind of narrowed down where they've been holding, and we got one on the last pass, and then this, this past one, uh, both rods went down. We're going to bleed these guys out and get the rods back out. Guys, I zoomed out, and what I want to do, though, is I want to run my radar because right now the fog just kicked back in. And instead of splitting my screen, what I'm gonna do, which I easily can do on a 24 inch screen, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is with two or three clicks of the button, I'm gonna go ahead and overlay the radar over my screen. And literally, I'm on my chart page, I'm coming over to the menu, overlay says off, I'm gonna click on that. I can overlay serious weather, grid weather, structure, radar, heat map, I'm gonna go radar. And you can start seeing the boats are gonna start to show up over that. We're all set there. Click off of that. Going, you know, with the tide, we picked up one or two fish. As soon as we turned into it, it was one on and then a double knocked down right away. This, oh, no, double, tide, tide, double, double up. up. Double, double up, boy, double up. Uh, oh, no, so, yeah, there, there, double, there. Double. Set him up. So I was just telling Chris that I thought he was trolling too fast. <laughs> he, at six and a half knots, and the rod I was holding went down, and then the other one, Man, that fish tried to hit it three or four times. He had, yeah, he really, hooks. he did. He whacked it, he came back, he whacked it, he came back, and then all of a sudden I was like, I didn't take it out of gear. I kind of kept it up at lo over five knots. 
Oh, you just saw the boat and he's not happy. <laughs> okay, come on, fella. This thing is slipping out of my hands. All right, Chris. Oh man, he's spitting, spitting up a bunch of sand eels. Is that what it was? Yeah. Early on when we started, we were talking about which color would be best. By the end of the day, it really didn't matter. Uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, that motion, that depth, that vibration. These fish are, today at least, pretty aggressive and... When you first take them out of the water, you can feel the, underneath the underbelly, you can feel the pulsating of the heart pumping. I'm gonna go ahead and just right back in the water. <laughs> that was a freaking he belly the last flop. minute, so he ended up belly flop. He looked, <laughs> he looked like me out off the dock at Magansett trying to dive. Hey guys, we had a great morning out here fishing off the Hooter for Benito. Not big fish in that two to four, five pound class, but delicious eating. We put a few in the box. Jimmy made up a little slurry of uh, salt and ice earlier. This will be our last pass. 